Hey there, Wendy with Jazzy Doodle Designs. Today I'm going to be coloring in My Rice Doropa by Rita Berman. And I'm going to be coloring this page. So let's get started. I'm going to be using Polychromos colored pencils. Okay, many of you ask that I speak during these color along, so I'm going to give it a try. So we're starting with a kind of a, a light purplish blue here because I, I want to give this plum some different undertones. If you look at an actual plum, it's not a solid purple. There's kind of lighter red purples in it and more blue purples and what we would think of as a traditional purple. So here I'm just adding those in, just blending subtly and using a pretty soft hand and kind of coloring more with the side of the pencil just to bring some different tones to it. And then I'm going to go along and I'm going to create more of, you know, the more typical color of the plum here. Next, I'm going to go in with a darker color and I'm going to add that to the edges and kind of give it a little bit more of a 3D feel. When you add the darker elements to the sides of a round object like that, it just brings a little more roundness to the image. You can see it start to take more of a 3D type of appearance. And once again, I'm blending in kind of the redder purple tones. And now I'm going to add in that initial um, purple blue color, periwinkle type of color that adds, you know, plums have that kind of that white texture to them. And then I just deepen the shadows again here. Next, I'm going to bring in a Prismacolor White. I actually like Prismacolor White better than Polychromos as white. But I just add that to the, to the highlight area and just over the right side just to add that little sheen that plums have. Now, obviously, no one's going to look at my plum and, and think, that it's some realistic looking plum. But to me it looks a lot more realistic than if I were to just take one, maybe two colors of purple and add them to the image. And here I'm just tempering down that white just a touch. Here I'm adding some of that darker Delph blue that I used in the plum, I'm going to use it to add a little bit of shadow to the darker areas of the cherry. By using the same blue that was in the plum in the cherry, it will give continuity even though the cherry is red. Having those same tones gives continuity to the two images and you'll find that your pictures become more cohesive when they share certain undertones or certain uh, colors in them. So here I'm going in with the darker red and just kind of adding some of the darker areas around the edges and you know up where the stem meets where there would be shadows and just adding placing those first and then coming in with my lighter reds to blend them out and add a little bit of, you know, the over, this is kind of the mid-tone, so it's adding that overall quality of red. And then I go back in, I think, with a lighter tone and blend it all out. Yeah, see here I'm using a, a pink, and that pink just gives it that little bit of brightness that 
makes the cherry kind of come to life. And then I circle back and just add a little bit more depth um, and shadows with the darker tones and the mid-tones, kind of blending it all out. Then I go in with the Prismacolor, just add a little bit of highlight, a little bit of a, just a subtle highlight there on the side. Deepening the shadow. You can do this as little or as much as you'd like to find that color that you're happy with. Now I'm taking that same pink and I'm adding it here because at first I thought that was a plum and then I realized it was a cherry. So just repeating that same process adding the darker shadows on the edges and kind of in the center there. Adding a little bit of white to give it a little highlight and then going back in and blending it all out. Concentrating the darker colors on the edges. Actually looking at this now I think that was supposed to be an apple and oh well <laughs> I think I colored it like a cherry but you know, it's all in an interpretation, I guess. Now here, a lot of strawberries kind of have that yellow-ish color up at the top where they're not quite ripened. So I went in and, and added that in and then kind of came in with that lighter red. And when I do one of the lower strawberries I think I actually preferred the more red orange color combination for the strawberry one of the lower ones I do with a different color combination this is similar colors to what I used on the cherries and I feel like if I were to go back, I would probably use more of the orange-red colors for the strawberries. I think they turned out fine, but, you know, it's just that tweaking that we all do when we see our art and we're not unsatisfied with it. So here we're going to color a strawberry that has been split in half. So I want a much lighter tone here in the center. And so I add a little bit of that orange and a little pink in there. I'll probably add some white. And then I go around the edges with my strawberry color. Once again, sticking to the darker colors on the edges. I just come around and then I go back and I blend it all out. Using black, I'm going to go in and, and just put kind of a, a deep shadow right there where uh, that center line is to indicate a little bit of depth. To me, it makes it a little more 3D. So, and then I add this peachy color. Um, here in the in the center. I apologize if you can hear my dog. She's insisting upon being on my lap while I work, which is not helpful at all. But anyway, um, I just feel like that adding that darkness to that center really makes the strawberry give it depth. along with the edges here that rounds that out. 
And here I'm trying a little bit different yellow. I'm going to probably leave this one a little bit less ripe. So I'm, I'm putting those in. And this is the one where I think I may use the, the more red-orange tones as opposed to maybe not. The big one I think is, is the blue-reds. And I don't know why I skip up here and don't finish that strawberry. It's really hard when I color for you guys because when I color, it doesn't it doesn't matter what order I color in because it all gets done. But it's hard for me when I'm doing these, I realize how much I do jump around. So I'm trying to be conscious of that and trying to um, make it a little more cohesive for you as the viewer to um, to go in and instead of being like, why didn't you color the strawberries, like all the strawberries at once before you move on, I just tend to do whatever my little eyeball pops on and decides to color. So I am consciously working on that, but it is harder when um, you kind of get in a zone of coloring and you just want to, I don't know, you just kind of just dive in and do um, whatever you see. So once again, just bringing in um, a little depth around the seeds, adding in just a little yellow in the tone. putting those, the yellow in the seeds and adding a little bit of white to them to make them pop. So I'm just adding the white there where you would see kind of a rind on the orange slice. There is that pithy part. You have to be careful when you add white though, especially Prismacolor, because it it tends to leave a little bit of a wax buildup that can be hard to blend out sometimes. So be, be gentle when you put the white in. I think it definitely has a place. Just don't, make sure you don't apply it too thickly or um, you can have a little bit of trouble. So my idea with this is I want to go in and I want to put this more almost a yellow color in because if I just go in with the orange and then I add darker orange for the shadows, the overall look of the orange loses that brightness and kind of more of its, um, I don't know, I guess brightness is the word I'm looking for. So that when I come in and I add this, this orange on it, that yellow goes, it, this orange is a little translucent, so you still see a little bit of that yellow coming through it. And it just lends um, some depth to the color and some brightness that it would lack if I just went in with just this regular orange. And once again, I know I I start this orange and then I move on to something else and then I'm going to come back later on and add it. So don't look at the orange now and think, oh, that's ugly. <laughs> because it, it definitely is like, are you going for a lemon? Are you going for an orange? It's definitely going to be an orange. And... Um, but I do know that I like stop kind of mid coloring it and move on to something else at some point. So so I'm bringing just, I'm not trying to color in those little openings. I'm actually circling around them just to make them kind of pop out a little bit more. And then kind of going around the edges 
just to, to make those look a little more curvy and not so flat. So just adding a little bit more of the orange in, kind of building up those colors, kind of maintaining that, you want to maintain that lighter um, area that is between the rind or whatever. But I'm just kind of blending everything together with this lighter color. And here's where I skip ahead. So just like with the plum, I go in with, you know, a lighter purple. Then I come in with a darker purple. And then I add in kind of this red purple. And then I just go in and I'm, I'm filling stuff in. Well, I guess I'm just adding the darker to these grapes. But then I'm going to go in and using that darker I'm going to go around the edges they're so small that I'm just almost just making little marks to add a little bit of that depth and then repeating the process down here at the bottom grapes are all different colors so having kind of a little bit of a, a difference between them, I think makes them look more realistic. Plus once again, just using the same colors that I used in the plum and in the other fruits, just adds a cohesiveness so while your eye sees okay you gotta she's got red she's got purple she's got orange all of the different things that we've colored so far have all of those same colors in them in certain tones and so your eye doesn't feel or it doesn't feel to you like I don't know have you ever seen a page that has so many different colors it, it just looks off somehow. I want to stop here and, and say that I'm circling all of these seeds to give a little depth and dimension to this strawberry. But anyway, back to the cohesiveness. I That's why when you see monochromatic, um, you know, something that's done in one color or maybe only two or three colors let's say blue green and like a teal kind of color when you see those kind of images those can be very appealing because there's cohesiveness to them and you get that automatically through you know just only using those three hues but when when you're coloring something like this, it, it would look a little off if I decided to color the cherries and the orange and everything all in shades of purple. Like people would be going, what are you doing? Like, why are you even doing this? Um, yeah, so if you look at this one, I start off with Elizabeth um, Crimson, but then I actually moved to this pale geranium lake, which is a little bit more of an orangey uh, red. Once again, kind of tying that orange of uh, the, the yellows and the oranges in the orange into the strawberry. And not all strawberries are that deep uh, red. Some of them are brighter. And I actually prefer that. I think it looks a little more realistic. So moving on to our watermelon, um, I'm going in with the undertones of the pink. A lot of watermelon is a very 
pinkish color in my opinion and so I wanted to kind of go in with your pinks and then just add a little bit of red to the deeper spots here at the you know against the rind where the watermelon gets a little uh, darker and denser and so I think that by using the darker colors towards the rind there it really lends to that um, feel of it being thinner on that edge Once again, just like with the orange, I go in with a little bit of white just to kind of maintain. I don't want that area to get too dark. And then I go in with this really bright green because if you look at watermelon rind, there's kind of that lightish green piece. It's not completely white and it's not really green. And so that's kind of the look I'm going for here. And then I'm gonna bring in that real deep green on the edge there. And going in for the seeds with the black. I'm not filling in the seed entirely. If you notice, it's hard to tell because they're so small. But I'm only doing maybe half of the seed and leaving the other half a little bit white and I feel like that also gives it a little more dimension than if I were to just go in and completely fill in the seeds you know completely with the black. Now obviously do whatever you like. This is I'm not, you know, I've never been to art school. I'm not a professional. Um, half the time I don't know what I'm doing. But I have learned certain tricks over the years with Copics and, and watercolor and things that I feel like kind of lend to um, me making the decisions that I do. I just add a little bit of white there to, um, to lighten it up a little bit. And then I'm going to go... Um, I believe I go back over it because, oh, maybe I don't, um, but you could go back over that as well. Now with these leaves, I picked a more olivey, um, muted kind of green because to me the focal point of these images is the fruit and the flowers that's what brings this image to life so by using more muted greens it's going to make them secondary characters in this picture and i go in with my dark greens i start out with light and then i go in and just going along each ridge you'll see i just kind of draw a little bit of a line there to add a little bit of a definition with my darkest green. And then I'm going to take my mid-tone green and kind of blend that out a little bit into the lighter green. And then that adds, it makes those leaves look a little more like they have ridges. And then going in for the, along that vein and using the darker color. And in this one, I'm going to really concentrate a heavy amount of dark in the center. I still do I still do the ridges, but I also just really deepen the shadows of that leaf because it's kind of behind. It's tucked back a little bit. And if you notice, I you really want to make sure to leave you want definition between your light. Oh, I'm sorry about my hair. <laughs> Looks like I did a good job combing my hair that day when I was coloring. Um, but, um, you know, you want to use your dark colors and 
it's my personal preference. I like pictures that have a lot of contrast, so I try to make sure that I always leave light and dark areas and not just go in and make everything all, you know, the same shade of green. Boy, I just really hunched over my desk. <laughs> Getting my big old head in the way. So, apologies there. There's no right or wrong way to do leaves. You could go really dark and then have light tips. You can do more of like with the ridges on any, even on these little ones, we could have gave them ridges or you could go one half of the leaf dark and the other half light. With certain images, I'm more concerned with light source, and I know there are much better artists out there that go in and are really aware of light and can use it very effectively to bring an image to life. In this image, I'm, I'm going more for the contrast and not concerning myself as much with light source, right or wrong. Now here I chose a much more vibrant green and you saw me put that really almost like a, I don't know, it's not the chartreuse color but it's a really very bright light green and it's going to really draw the eye to this leaf compared to the other leaves and I did I did that on purpose um, because I didn't, to me this is more of a focal point leaf and so I didn't want to push it back. I wanted to bring it forward. And so I'm doing that by using brighter colors. But if you notice, I'm still using a dark, a medium, and a light tone and um, and still adding the contrast that the image needs to make it look 3D and somewhat more realistic than if I would just have, you know, colored it all one shade of green and added some, you know, pops of color on those little dots or whatever that's on there. Now this leaf only has ridges, it says, on one side. So you could, you could color it that way, you could add the ridges yourself to the other side. It's really up to you how you want to do it. I took this to mean that this other side was more exposed to the light or maybe it's a little folded and so I didn't add ridges to that half of the leaf. This one I went in a little bit darker in the center once again because it's kind of face down, a little less light source, and then just brought in that highlight for the edges there. I kind of feel like I'm repeating myself and I don't want to bore you guys to tears. I 
I'm thinking of doing a giveaway. I've got 200 subscribers now, and I was thinking of trying to do a giveaway at 500 subscribers. So be watching for a video. I need to check into the YouTube. I know I know it's possible to do giveaways, but I want to make sure I'm following the rules as far as what I'm allowed to do or give away or whatever I need to do. So I'll be doing that coming up soon. I'm really open if you guys have ideas for giveaway prizes. I'm thinking maybe coloring, like a coloring book or two. Um, and then a, a bigger giveaway when I hit a thousand subscribers. But I'm pretty excited and I'm very appreciative to all of you that have subscribed. And if you haven't, please hit the like and subscribe button. It really does, especially with small channels, it makes a huge, huge difference because YouTube now thinks, oh, people like this video, I'll show it to more people um, and see if they like it too. And if people don't engage, then YouTube thinks that the video is stinky and doesn't share it. So going back to those little flowers, I really like this color combination. I'm a big fan of taking like a purple and a yellow and mixing them together, even though they kind of make a brownish tone in the center. I just, it's something I actually really like. So you'll probably see it. I know you're going to see it on at least one of these flowers and I'll try and talk about it then. But once again, I'm sticking to the same color family of greens. You can make some a little darker, some a little lighter. And um, here I'm adding a little bit of yellow and a I was going to add yellow and I decided to add orange. Just once again, just to bring in a little bit more of that orange into the picture since the orange is pretty much the only orange fruit. So that's why I tried to bring it into the strawberry and I tried to bring it in to the leaf just because you never want to have, I, sh I say never, I prefer to not have a color that is the only color, like for example, the orange. I don't want that to be the only orange in my picture. I want to bring that in, even if it's subtle with mixing the purple and the yellow to get that kind of an orangish brown and adding it just in little tiny bits into the leaves. It, it, it really makes a big difference in how cohesive the picture feels when you're done. So that's a little tip that maybe you can think about when you're coloring is how can I add those colors in. So once again bringing the purple into the flowers to to bring out you know the plum and the grapes we're adding just a little bit more of that purple. And here I'm adding a little bit more of that orange because I like to do things in odd numbers also so I try and if I'm going to have orange elements I want to have three or five rarely one and like I said the little pops of color really you know make a big difference but I'm actually wanting to have some more orange actual elements as well so by bringing in these little I don't know, daisies maybe, um, and making them orange. I don't know if they're daisies. What are these called? Maybe they are daisies. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I colored them. I colored them orange. But if you notice, I only color one side of each petal orange, and then I'm going to deepen 
the side that I colored with a darker orange and by leaving that the other side with that white it just to me it, it adds to the flower and just makes it more interesting I don't know that I would say it makes it more realistic I just feel like it's more interesting to look at than if it was all solid um, just orange petals right so don't be afraid to use white in your images and to use um, variations of color So I'm adding some yellow here and then I'm going to bring in a brown just to add uh, a little bit of depth where it would be um, darker. And if you notice I didn't go all the way to the edge and here I'm bringing in black to add a little bit to the, the seeds or the, I don't know, to add a little texture to the inside. And I'm going to take that same black and I'm going to deepen up all of the where the deepest part of the shadows on these leaves are. Now, I don't always use black because sometimes black can make an image look flatter. If you notice with the cherry, I didn't use black to add those shadows. I used the blue. But... I decided to use black in this and I think it works. I could have used, um, you can use a lot of different things. You can go with a complementary color, to, but that can often leave it a little more muted than you might want. Um, but I feel like by deepening those colors, it just added a little more interest. And then I'm going to cover that black. I don't want it to look black at all. So I'm going to bring in that mid-tone green and kind of cover up all that black with green so that I get the depth of the black without the look of black, if that makes sense. Once again, just kind of going around these, um, these little dots or whatever kind of adding in those darker purples or <laughs> purples oranges here I I actually pulled up an image of a pansy online so that I would have a reference and they they have this purple edge and then they have kind of a, a yellow mid section and then kind of a red purple almost like a maroon kind of color with a yellow center and then some white so that's kind of what i'm doing here and i'm just looking at my reference photo and being so that i can get it to look like a pansy as opposed to just me trying to remember what it looks like in general so don't be afraid to use reference photos as well. I, they can be extremely helpful. And then I'm kind of blending that yellow in with the white, kind of blending it into the purple as well. And then just kind of blending it a little deeper with the purple. And then going in with my darker purple on the edges. And notice the difference as I go around how much difference that makes in that image. How much it really makes it pop. Now I'm going almost all the way up to the yellow. Just leaving ever so slightly the white. And just kind of blending it a little bit into the yellow so that I don't really have the white remaining now. It's just lighter. And then I bring out kind of like, you know how petals have like little streaks of color? That's kind of what I'm 
doing here is just adding those little lines of color smoothing it out So that little spot, I just used the two things of, of green. Now this is that same pink that I used in other parts of like the cherry and the, the strawberry. Same yellow, same brown. You'll start to see a pattern even though there's, I use a lot of colors in this. Each, it's because each hue has, you know, I, I do like a dark, a medium, a light for each actual, you know, I'm trying to use the proper terminology because hue means color. And sometimes people, like, they think pink is a color when it's really, it's a tint of red. Um, but the reality is, is most people think of it as a color, so I don't want to confuse anybody, um, by being too technical. So this is that same purple red that I used in the plum, in the grapes, and I'm just doing these little, I think they're supposed to be little flower petals. Um, but anyway, I'm going to use this. I use that red purple, then I go in with some purple purple. A little bit of pink on on the tips. Kind of blending them all together. And then taking that that yellow I used in the strawberries and in the centers of the flowers to kind of bring it into the middle. Using that brown just as to deepen it on the edges. See, this is where I start to struggle, guys. I'm like, do I just tell you the same thing over and over? <laughs> I don't want to bore you guys to tears. And maybe I should put just a little music on in these dead spots. Um, but uh, I got to say, I've been very blessed by the amount of support that I've gotten so far on the channel uh, you guys that have subscribed and have taken the time to comment it really does mean the world to me I want to know that what I'm doing brings value to people I realize that you guys all have choices that you make which videos you watch and the fact that you're watching mine and taking the time to comment and to compliment me or to add suggestions when I ask for feedback. It really does mean a lot and it helps me to deliver the kind of content you guys want to see. So please never hesitate to do that. These little pink flowers, I, it was pretty self-explanatory just um, going in with the light color, adding a little bit of um, depth, adding a darker color to bring some depth to them, and then going in just like I did with all the other leaves. I am going to be starting a beginner set 
or a beginner series where I go in and start from the absolute beginner what if you've never colored before where to find images um, what the different mediums are and then I will have deeper dives into each medium but I am going to be kind of doing an overview of each particular you know things so that as a beginner I think sometimes it gets overwhelming you see people talk about products and you don't know the difference between alcohol markers and watercolor markers and and why would one why would you choose one over the other and what are the pros and cons of each and price points and all the things so I am going to be doing a, a, a beginners series and I'm thinking I'll probably put out one video a week having to do with that and then another video um, during the week maybe with a color along or or a flip through or something like that here I'm just adding um, you know the darker shades and the shadows there along the edges blending it all out I did add the yellow because I wanted this to be a warm honey colored uh, cone and I I like the look of having that yellow kind of peek through the cone. Now you you could have went through where all those dotted lines are and really emphasized and brought out um, each individual ridge and each in, in each of those squares you could have went darker and then left a white or a lighter ridge and that would have made it look kind of like honeycomby um, so that that cone had more texture. Now here I'm bringing in that really bright green that we used on the focal leaf and I talked about how I made a conscious decision to use that. Here I'm just adding this color to all the leaves just once again to add a little bit of a cohesiveness to the greens it doesn't change the the overall color of the leaves but that little that bright little pop just adds a little bit more to me this image is very bright and whimsical and those leaves were looking just a little too um too muted so here I'm going in with like a warm gray and adding in a color and then I'm going to go back in and, and add the actual color in the little loopy curls and that kind of stuff. Here I'm just adding a little bit to the shadow with just a darker, a darker gray. Grays are really good for putting shadows underneath things without adding uh, necessarily a color. I actually considered leaving that kind of more that with the idea of it being like kind of a, a whiter color, you know, like ice cream type of color. I just didn't really like it so you'll see me add more color in a bit now here I'm actually kind of creating a little bit of a texture in that leaf I just felt like it was a little I don't know flat so I just added a little darkness there just to make it look like it had a little bit of a a curl to it Now these blueberries, this is the same that, that, if you notice these colors, these are the same blues that I used in the plum, and I'm bringing those back in in this blueberry, 
and even though it has a, a totally different it's a much if you look at the blueberry it looks blue compared to the plum definitely is more purple but they have essentially the same colors minus the purple so All of this video, by the way, is at twice the speed. So if it seems like I'm coloring a little faster, I did speed it up because I feel like this is still a good speed that you can see what I'm doing. It's not so fast that you're like, oh my gosh, what is she doing? And yet on the areas where you want to, you can obviously slow it down. Um, but then my videos aren't five hours, which can be a little intimidating when you see five hours because <laughs> um, I'm not a huge fan of, of putting things in um, part one and part two. And I know that I could and I would probably get more, um, you know, I would have two videos, but I kind of like having everything at once. Obviously, if you can't do the whole um, video at a time, just when you go back, YouTube is pretty good at remembering where you were in a video. And I really do like that. So as long as you don't sign out of YouTube, it will keep track of where you're at in the video. But I kind of like having it all in one. Now, I may change that over the course of time but um but anyway that's how i'm doing things right now at least because i do want to get some vi i have a lot of ideas for videos and if i start making these part one and part two i don't want to put out a video every day i think that can be a little overwhelming for people i feel like it's a little overwhelming for me but I'm thinking twice a week with one concentrating on something like this, like a project. Once again, let, let me interrupt myself. I like mixing yellow with certain things. I like it with purple. I like it with pink. I like some of the colors that you come up with when you do it. And I'm not really sure that this is realistic at all, um, that you know, ice cream would drip pink with yellow tips. But <laughs> but somehow I think it works in this image. So let me know your thoughts on this. Do you think I was crazy to do this? Um, but anyway, so that is my thoughts on, on whether or not I'm going to be splitting up videos and that kind of stuff. But do let me know if you guys prefer it that way. If you prefer a part one and a part two and you don't know what's how it ends as a viewer i always like to see the finished product even at the beginning of the video i'm like oh okay so that's what we're doing as opposed to me having to go search for it to me it's not really a benefit to the youtuber if i don't watch the video and i just um start a video, go straight to the end, look at the picture, and then click out, it actually kind of harms their their views. And so I don't want to do that to them, and I don't want to do it to myself. So that's why I always put uh, the beginning, or, you know, at the beginning, what the picture looks like. It's in my thumbnail. That way you know what to expect from the video. So here I'm kind of going from like a little bit of a chocolate look and just kind of deepening. These are the same browns that I've been using. This is the darker shade of that beast. Is that how you say it? Bistra? I don't know. Bister? Is it called Bister? 
But anyway, this is Nougat. I can pronounce that. Uh, <laughs> this is the darker version of that, and I'm just kind of going in with that. And then lightening it up on, you know, as it drips down, using that lighter shade to do that. So I popped a picture of Ellie up, and I may actually put a little, I may try and introduce Ellie to the page uh, here and there. She's a big part of my life. Right now, as I work, she's curled up next to me. Um, and maybe towards the end of this video, I'll pop in a segment. I filmed her um, just kind of looking at the camera so that you can get a feel for who she is. She is a Morky. She's part Maltese, part Yorkie, and she's a year old, so she's still a puppy. And let me tell you, I had a dog for 15 and a half years. That dog was my life. My channel's named after him. Kind of makes me tear up to talk about him, but um, when Jazz passed away, it took me a year and a half to decide to get another dog. And so it had been 17 years since I had a puppy, and I had kind of forgotten what it was like uh, to have a puppy because this dog is high action. She is the sweetest dog, and I'm delighted to have her, but she definitely is high energy. So... I'm sure you'll be seeing her here and there um, as we grow together as a channel. So once again, um, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I, I've taken the blue, the yellow, the purple, all the different colors that I've used in this picture, and I'm kind of putting them in these little pearls, because pearls are kind of... Um, you know, they have those little different colors. So that was kind of what I was going for. And here I'm putting a little bit of pink in. Once again, really not um, covering the entire sprinkle in pink. I want to leave a little bit of a white edge to it. So now I'm coming in with a little bit darker pink-ish purple. And... But really trying not to cover up all of that white because I feel like that kind of gives it a little bit more of a 3D effect. And I will bring in more white when I do, I do a Posca pen at the end. And then kind of carrying on like I did with those little petals, I go in with that crimson and do part of the, the heart and then I bring in you know, the pink and blend that out as I go. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little of that blue that we used in our plum and we're going to bring that in I think I, yeah, I do a little bit of yellow too. I just think it's kind of fun. So I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with those clouds. I started to think about it and then I realized I hadn't done a couple of the pearls. So I went in and made sure to get those and then I realized I missed a little piece of you know that pink um, ice cream melting or whatever do you ever do that when you're coloring you just you miss an entire 
little section. If you notice down by the pansy, I've missed an entire petal. And so I'm going to have to go back in and I do catch it, of course, but <laughs> I don't, I'm not exactly sure if we just get myopic or what. Here's that same yellow that I used in those um, flowers on the left there with the the purple and the yellow. And I'm basically creating the same color pa palette here. I just kind of like the look of that purple and that ochre together. And then I'm using a brighter yellow to kind of blend it, blend the two together. And then down by where the petals attach, I'm adding the shadow and by deepening the colors there. And this gives that petal a little bit more dimension. And that's what this purple does too. I'm just using it to deepen those shadows. Not really trying to carry it up the petal at all, just to deepen the shadows. And then I go in and I'm creating the center with those same colors, the browns, the yellows, like I did the petal or the flowers to the side. And then incorporating just that little pop of orange again. And I'm really sorry, I colored the entire scooter. Um, and I was off screen and so I just deleted it all out because there's no point in watching you know you can kind of see like my hand flick here and there but that's really annoying and I apologize I want to be zoomed in for you guys so you can see as well as possible but then sometimes I end up cutting off part of what I'm looking at so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna go through and I sped this part up quite a bit maybe not this section maybe it's the next section but um, actually I think this is sped up quite a bit because you know you gotta you gotta take your time and just get into all of those little shadows and what this is doing is it's bringing that 3d look to the Leaning Tower of Pisa there to indicate that that when you're looking into those little porticos or whatever they're called, um, that that they go back a little ways, that they're n that it has you know dimension to it. So I'm going to go in with this darker color, this burnt umber to add the deepest shadows, and then I'm going to blend it out with the bister. Um, And while this is sped up, I think the next little section um, may be even more sped up. So I apologize. I actually go in with Nougat, um, which is the next shade up. And then I will go in with a third color. So I'm just kind of blending that, that in. Because you want it dark, but to me, by, by putting several colors in there, as opposed to just going in with let's say this color and just doing the whole section you could you could definitely go in there's no wrong way to color 
and I hope that when I do um, my my color alongs, especially if I'm talking and I'm saying do this and do that, this is not me saying do this and do that. This is me saying this is what I am doing. And if you would like to do it, this is what you should do. Because I'm a big believer that if you're not having fun, then it's not worth it. So if you're the kind of person that wants it's more important for the project to be done. It's a, it's it's more about the motions of doing it than the actual outcome. Or maybe you like just simple coloring um, because I've seen some great simple coloring. Um, I'm totally okay with that. The main thing is is you need to be happy with what you color. And now, don't get me wrong. We all go through stages especially when we first start where what we envision in our mind we don't have the skill to put it on paper right which is why we're watching youtube videos because we're trying to figure out how can i and i'm just blending everything together here leaving a little bit of uh, of a pop of white in the background there um there are people that would color these all dark and I'm totally okay with that because there's that's just a different interpretation so never when you watch my videos at least just know that I'm just trying to show you what I did to get the results I did and um, if you're unhappy with the way your work is know that you have to to overcome that you just have to color more and you will find what works best for you and you will find the style that you like and you, you may not even decide that you like my style there's a couple of card makers that I watch that their style isn't my style at all I just like them personally. I enjoy watching them. I also learn techniques from them. So while I might not want to reproduce the card they make, I learn techniques that I can use to make a card in my style. And so just know that it's okay. It's okay if you look at this and go, I wouldn't color this this way at all i wouldn't use these colors i wouldn't you know i think all of those little porticos should be completely filled in and dark um and i'm just adding a little dark ridge there just to um just for interest so just know that i personally am okay with that and i think that's good Color it the way that gives you joy. But if you can look at, oh, I like how she colored that plum, or I like how she colored that flower, but I hate orange, I would color it blue. Just know you can apply those same principles to um, any color or any image because the principles don't really change. And this is not what someone that is trying to produce realistic art would tell you to do. Um, if someone was trying to teach you how to do realistic flowers, they are certainly not going to be giving you the same advice as I do. So, and that's, and that's fine. Um, I think there's a place for both. And the people that are watching my videos, I... I feel pretty confident that they're not going into my videos looking for realistic coloring advice or advice that's going to get them to become a professional color pencil artist. That's just my two cents. But anyway, now I'm going back in and I decided, you know, all those little I didn't quite know if I wanted those filled in or not. I decided I did um, where the, the
the window met or whatever. So that's all I'm doing here. Just adding a little darker shadow. Blending the whole building with this warm gray. So my grandson is one month old, and he's doing very well. He's a very content little boy, and super cute. I will pop an image of him up on the channel as well. So here what I'm doing is I'm just adding the darker Payne's Gray just to parts of this tire leaving two little I'm I'm trying to leave two little streaks of light where I'm putting it in right now with this warmer gray. I just want these little sections to be just ever so slightly lighter just it gives the illusion a little bit that it's shiny and um, kind of going in and darkening up these hubcaps a little bit you can see as I darken that middle section how it just makes it look a little more shiny not like super shiny, but just, you know, like the tires have a little bit of a sheen. Just darkening up the handles and the... A little headlight there. I'm assuming that's, that might be part of the building I just colored. <laughs> At the time I thought it was a headlamp, but I think it's part of that building. Oh well, it's a very subtle section. Nobody's going to notice except for me. Now I can't unsee it. So just kind of going in and coloring the seat. Now, for those of you that are coloring at home, I do encourage you to change your, um, move your book. Turn it upside down. Turn it sideways. I don't do that because I'm trying to film for you. So if you notice, like my hand here is in this really kind of a weird position. And I think that's a lot of why I end up getting my head kind of in the camera is because I'm, trying to get at things at a certain direction. So I'm going to take my darker color and go around to each of those little um, nobules and, and the top because I want the middle section of this seat to be lighter because that will make it look more round by doing that. But anyway, Feel, make sure you're changing uh, the direction of your book when you color. And if I wasn't filming, I would have this at a completely different angle for a lot of these images. So I know people that color on um, like a Lazy Susan to where they can really rotate their book very easily. I don't know that I would like that. I think I would probably end up 
it would probably move too much for my liking but when I'm just coloring for fun like on the couch or something like that I have that book every which way from Sunday but when I'm filming for you guys I do my very best to keep it completely stable because I don't like when images shake on camera and it's it's just not a good it doesn't feel good here I'm adding just a little bit of pink uh, kind of blending it out just to um, give these a little more dimension as well blending it with the white having it all white was um, just not the look I was going for and once again I'll try and get better at coloring the entire <laughs> you know like if I'm coloring that petal thing to do it all in one uh, sitting but sometimes I have to think about things I'll start something and I'll go oh I don't really know what I want to do with that um, like with those clouds I've been kind of percolating what I want to do with the clouds you know what do I want to do with this sign so I'll leave them and go back to them once I become clearer in my head what I want to do so here I come in with my light tone and I go over the entire thing and then I come in with my darker tone and I'm gonna just add a little bit of darkness boy I really have my head in these a lot I'm very very sorry and I'm really sorry that my hair is not even like combed for the occasion um, but oftentimes <laughs> I'll go and work out and then I just want to get busy working so I save my shower until a little later and I cool down by relaxing and coloring or or whatever so um, it's one of the benefits and the drawbacks of working uh, at home is that you know I can color in my pajamas or I can color and work out gear and you guys don't know unless I stick my uncombed head in the camera so so once again just kind of going over everything with the lightest tone and then and then going back in and adding the depth and leaving lighter areas at the end in this case I'll leave lighter areas in the middle and I'll have the darker area there on the right hand side So just using that same lighter tone there in the middle. Going back in with the darker tones and then I'm going to smooth it all out. I'm just using the lines kind of as my guide for where to put those the deepest of the red colors and then kind of coming back in you know with a mid-tone and now with the lighter tone 
and once you get this initial layer down then you go back in and repeat the process and by repeating the process then you get that blend now you could go over the entire all of that red in the scooter and in the sign if you wanted to here I decided what I wanted to do is make that circle um, so that I could put my background in it and this is just a die that I have um, but I have a bunch of these dies and they allow me to make like a little template of where I want to stay in the lines. Now I will tell you, you could put down pastels in this. I wanted to do it all in colored pencil, but I will tell you with polychromos especially, it takes a lot of layers. I believe as I go through this, I am going to show you I have this quite a bit sped up and I believe I show you three layers of going from the darker color I use a dark a medium you see the two pencils to the right there those are the three colors that I'm going to use in this background and I start with the darkest and then I work my way down I add the medium then I go down to the lightest I will tell you I went back afterwards and I note this as we get to it but I go back in afterwards and I add at least another three more layers and in the final image you will still see little like I feel like I could add a couple of more layers that's one of the things I like about Prismacolors I don't feel like I have to do that many layers to get the desired effect that I want. I like polychromos. I think they're really good pencils and I enjoy doing this image with them but I will say for backgrounds I feel even even the, the leaves and everything it just takes a little more layering to get the results that I want. Now I do know that as I go along, I learn tips and tricks to doing things, and I'm probably making this harder than it should be. But I feel like I'd, I don't have my hand pulled way back from the pencil. Just barely touching the pencil. I feel like I'm, I'm using a lighter. And, you know, I'm not using a heavy hand by any means. But I am not being ultra light here, and yet I feel like to get the final image that you see in the photograph, it took six, seven layers. Well, that's a lot for this big of a background. So I guess my choices are going forward that I could use something like a pastel to go ahead and lay the color down to where part of why I feel like I needed so many layers is because the white was still kind of peeking through and there wasn't what I call a really super smooth blend going on and so I do feel like um, that's something to consider I could have even used like if I were to do another image and I wanted to, to color the image on polychromos I would probably consider doing the background in Prismacolor if I was going to go all colored pencil. Now I try very hard not to do not to mix pencils when I do color alongs because I feel like not everybody has the same pencils that I do and I don't want them thinking oh 
I have polychromos, that's awesome. I can do this image and then they get three quarters of the way done and I start throwing in random colors. I do oftentimes use Prismacolor white, but I feel like that's something that's it's it's easily accessible. You can get it at Michaels, you can get it at Hobby Lobby, you can get it at any art store, you can get it on Amazon, and it's not going to break anybody's bank to to spend a couple bucks to get one pencil. But I do feel like the Prismacolor is worth it in the white because it's so much more opaque. That being said, I did, and I didn't show it because I didn't want you to do it, but down here in the bottom left hand corner, I used a little bit of white because I wanted a very light background at the bottom. And I wish I wouldn't have. It made it really hard for me to get a really smooth blend. So here I am, I, I may have cut it out, I don't know if I even filmed it, but don't do that. I, I didn't like how that worked. So here I am starting the second layer of the blue, and as you can see, each layer adds a depth and it becomes more blended and I could tighten up my strokes a little bit. Um, I'm not going crazy, but I could tighten them up a little bit. I'm not a patient person by nature, and so light-handedness and taking my time and all of that kind of goes against <laughs> my nature in general, so I do my best. I am liking how this is turning out, though. And I did, I did like how it turned out. But I'm just warning you, you gotta do the layers. Lots of layers. Unless you're just better at this than I am. So I don't know if you can see at the bottom left. That is where I added the white Prismacolor. And if you can see how it's a little more streaky, it actually becomes a little more pronounced how as the as I do more layers, uh, the other layers will start to really blend. And this particular area just, I really struggle to get it to blend as smoothly as I would like. And around that leaf, it almost looks like a different color. I just, um, so I don't recommend that you do that. Okay, so let's get started on our clouds. I decided I really wanted to incorporate kind of the look that I had with the pearls in the clouds to just make them, I didn't just want them to be white, I wanted it to be all the colors that we used. So I'm basically taking the lightest version of the yellow, the orange, the pink, the blue, the purple, and just kind of just laying in a little bit of color kind of concentrating on the, the on the side 
of the pencil as opposed to the point so I just get a very um, kind of a smoother transition and I'm just placing these colors randomly I don't have a specific rhyme or reason just trying not to lay blue on yellow because uh, we don't necessarily need green clouds or um, purple on yellow so um, but I'm just laying the colors in and then I'm going to take the white and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of blend them lightly together using the white not anything I'm not like burnishing them down or anything just a soft blend and then I took the cream and I'm going in and concentrating a little bit more on blending them together I feel like the cream just kind of adds a little bit of color to it makes the clouds look like they're maybe shining a little or glowing a little bit more than just the white was doing so our for the final step I'm gonna go in with a Posca pen and I'm just adding little highlights to the edge of the clouds not necessarily covering up any lines or anything but where those lines are my goal um, wasn't to completely eliminate the lines but I do feel like by covering those lines it just makes them pop a little bit more I do these little bubbles in white and then the rest of the page I just go in and just add highlights here and there where I feel like it needs it um, the pearls the highlights on the fruit where they're shiny I put white at the end of each of these petals and guys there is no right or wrong to where you put the white like on this little flower there was little black dots so that's where I chose to put the white um, where there's like a shiny spot on the apple or on the seeds I put it just makes them pop just a little bit and you can decide sometimes I tap my finger on it if I don't want it to be quite as bright you can go in afterwards and do a little color on there if it's too bright you can tone it down a little bit it's all in what you like this isn't even a necessary step at all I personally like the look of a little bit of white I feel like it just I don't know it gives a little something extra to your image and there are times when I like it more than others so like to me it makes sense that there's kind of this bright shiny spot on a cherry but not necessarily on an orange because orange oranges don't get shiny um, I put some on the little heart so I guess what I'm saying is just do what you like um, and if you don't like it then you either you know for next time or sometimes I have been able to scratch it off with my fingernail if I if I don't like it like I said I, I can mute it with my finger and then you can go back in and color it Posca does leave a little bit of a of a raised surface this is just the acrylic paint pen it's not the oil based pen um, I personally like 
how it looks. I like, I find it much easier to use than say jelly, jelly rolls and Signo white pens. I love both of those pens, but not with colored pencil because what happens is the wax gets on the roller bar ball of your pen and it clogs up and then your pen won't write and I've tried I have I have YouTubed it and watched the videos and done the things and I don't know for me I have never I've I've salvaged like two pens out of literally 20 because I bought a whole box of Signo white pens and I do like them and in card making I use them a lot like on cardstock if I want to write something or to highlight something but I have not been able to use them successfully with colored pencil. Copics? Yes. Colored pencils? No. Because the wax gets in the roller ball. But maybe maybe I use too much colored pencil maybe you'll have a different result I don't know but for me Posca pens work every time and they last me a really long time now I'm just going in and, and marking those little seeds with just a, a hint of a dot and a little bit on the rind not all the way around the line just a little pop here and there and so that's the remaining here I am going to fill in gelato hopefully I move the camera up um, I apologize I can't even tell you how hard it is to try and color try and figure out what you're doing and remember where your head and the camera is and all of that so I do apologize but I fill in the gelato just with the Posca pen Oh good, I finally got it together, Wendy, and moved my image up. I'm just going to put a few highlights here on the tires and on the fenders. Look how that the white really makes those wheels look shiny. And maybe you don't like that look. You know, it's certainly up to you. This is all just decoration. Now here it is before I added the extra layers and here it is once I added more layers. So I did go in and add about three more layers. So thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments if you liked how I did this video and would like to see more like it in the future.